Hi guys, this is Ed. I'm going to show you a quick little tutorial on how to set up a DJ template on the Akai APC40 Mark II. So this is part one of a, a few um, episodes I'm going to do. Um, and the first one is setting up your two tracks and putting your effects rack on. So first of all, once you've consolidated all your songs, you've got your songs from Beatport or Juno Downloads or whatever, you've got them all in a folder um, and you've got your Ableton Live open. The very first thing obviously you want to do is add the folder um, in Ableton down here on the bottom left. Select your folder and add it. I've already added mine in. Mine's in a folder called Set Music. So I've got all my tracks and all my tunes in here. And then for now, we're not going to need the two MIDI tracks. So I'm going to delete the two MIDI tracks. In the future, I will be using them though. So, um, but that's that's another story, right? So we're going to have track A on the left. And we're going to have track E on the right. And to rename those, you click them, you right click rename, or you can press, press Control and R. So, the first thing to know is that when you drag a, drag a track into Ableton, if you have your warp set on, where you can see it here, it will warp the song for you. Um, the next thing you want to do if is if you come down to this section, change that from beats to complex pro, and that's the way that it warps the song. If it's beats, it's normally for a simple drum beat, but because this song is a bit more complex, it's more than a drum beat, it's got synths and etc. in it, you need the complex warping mode on. So Ableton normally does a pretty good job of warping these. It doesn't get it right all the time, and I'll do another video on what to do if it doesn't get it right. But what you want to do now is you want to test that the track is warped. So turn your metronome on and press play and and see if it's in time I'd say that's pretty much in time not too shabby okay so turn the metronome off leave that on one bar for now I'm going to show you something else in a future tutorial to do with the quantization but let's leave that for now so the next thing you want to do um, is start adding an effects rack. So click down here onto your track A, and I've got these set as favorites, but what you want to draw in from your audio effects, um, which you can find here, is you want your EQ3, and you want your auto filter. So with those two, you want to select them both, so hold down shift and click both, so they're both highlighted, and group them, pressing Control and G. So now they're grouped. So the next thing you want to do is start setting up your macro mapping. So you click this little clock here, plonk, like that, and you've got your macro one, two, three, and four. And eventually what we're going to do is we're going to map these to the four knobs on the top of your device control. So, the first thing you want to do is click map and see it goes green and click gain low and click map on macro one. Then click, click gain mid, click map on macro two. Click gain high, click map on macro three. Then click frequency on your auto filter and click map on macro four yeah baby and now click on map again and that is your macros set up so because your macros are set up if i turn the first knob on my device control up and down it will control the lows and then the mids and then the highs and the frequency for the auto filter would be the last one so if I click map, I can see here that we've got some maxes and I like to set the highs, the maxes on the gains at zero decibels. There are six at the moment, I'd like to change it down. Once it changes to zero, I want to change that to 12.5 as well because that's the comfortable setting that I like for this filter. I don't like it to go above that. <clears throat> so I'm happy with that. 
So I'm going to turn the map off. And the next bit I'm going to do is actually set the mapping on the Akai APC40. So I'm going to press Control M on my laptop. I think it's Command and M on, I think it's Command and M on Apple. Everything's turned blue. And what I want to do is I want to set the slider to the frequency. So I touch the frequency button and I move the slider that I want to assign it to. The other thing I want to do is select the volume control on track A and slide the slider, the same slider. Now, press control and M, come out of the mapping. And now my slider controls the frequency and the volume which makes a pretty cool effect. It's like, a, I've heard it called a smart filter. I quite like that name, so we'll go with smart filter. Just gonna go back into my mapping, press Control M, and I've noticed that the volume control is at six decibels, which I think will raise it too high at the max level. So I'm gonna press zero, center, come out of mapping, use my slider, and you'll see it won't rise, it won't rise above zero when I put it at its max. So I don't have to worry about clipping. Sometimes a slider doesn't react when you've done your mapping. You move the slider and nothing's happening. Now what you need to do is you need to raise the slider up to the value that, it's, that it thinks it's at, and then it will re-engage and you'll be able to start using the slider again. So let's have a little play with that. So, top volume. Let's try turning the load down. Yeah, mids definitely working. Highs, great. I can do the smart filter, but the slider I think is better equipped. Boom, down we go, and up to the top. So I'm just going to stop that. And there's one other thing that I wanted to add into this. So we'll click on this little arrow here. We've got a chain. We we'll click on the chain. There's a little blue bar here. I want to extend the blue bar to the top. So I've got the full range and then just take off the zero. So the zero is the only thing that's not in the, bl in the blue bar. I'm going to control the map. I'm going to click that section where the blue bar is and I'm going to use the slider again. So now that will act as a cutoff. So when it's at zero, there'll be no sound coming through whatsoever. So if we carry on playing the song, sweet. Okay. I'm happy with that. The master track is clipping at the moment, but we're going to face that in, a, in, a, in the next video. So, um, okay, so you've got your first track set up. You've got your rack, your, your DJ effects rack, and you need to save it. So you get to this little floppy disk here. You name your DJ effects rack. Yep, you've named it. I see I've got a few here already, but just ignore that. All right, so we've got this one. Overwrite it. Forget. Yeah, don't worry about that. So we've got a DJ effects rack. And now we go to uh, track B, and we're going to drag that effects rack in here. We've got it all mapped out, right? So make sure that you've got your user button pressed on your APC, and then you're going to map. So let's just have a look here first. So if I turned off, if I was on my device call control, right, and I'm pressing five, it's just moving micro five, six, seven, eight, right? And it's moving low, mid, and high on the one, two, and three. We don't want that. We want them to be mapped on this part here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna press control and M, and I'm gonna delete these. I'm going to highlight them, delete them all, and I am going to click low, and I'm going to touch number five. Boom. I'm going to touch number the mid, 
and I'm going to press number six. I'm going to turn knob number six. I'm going to press high, and I'm going to turn knob number seven. Yup. And then I'm going to press frequency, and I'm going to do knob number eight. Right, I'm just going to turn them all on to full. Right, press Control and M or Command and M to come out of your MIDI mapping. Now, I'm hoping. Yes. So, now I've got my highs on macro 7, I've got my mids on macro 6, I've got my lows on macro 5. I've also, it's also connected to the frequency for some reason. So, I'm just going to turn, I'm just going to delete 20, and I'm going to press frequency again and do number 8. Okay, there we go 20, 21, 22, 23. Happy days, I think. Let's test that again. Low works, mid works, high works, frequency works. Let's try the slider. So the slider at the moment is just doing the volume. So we need to control the mapping for the slider. So track B, slider. So I'm going to do the frequency here, and I'm going to pull the slider up and down. And then I'm going to touch the volume on track B, and I'm going to do the slider up and down. I'm also going to go to here and change the decibels to zero, so we prevent the clipping. And then I've got the frequency up to 12.5, which is where I want it. I'm going to turn the mapping off. Right, let's test the slider. Bring the slider up and down a bit. Looking good. Virus and threat protection, don't worry about that. Right, so I've got my mapping on track A, my, I'm going to just have a look, click on track A, my lows, mediums, and highs seem to work, oh yeah, maybe, so I've got all three of those things working, plus the volume, track B, now, all we need to do really is go to our set list, choose a track, Chuck it in, select the waveform, make sure warp is on, test it with a metronome. That sounds like it is on the beat. Turn a metronome off, wicked. Sweet, so we've got our track A with our effects rack that works and it's mapped. We've got a track B, which has got our effects rack, is mapped. Both tracks are warped. And then all you'd have to do is add in your other track, your, your songs. Make sure they're warped and they go with a metronome. Um, and then what I would do is I would look at color coding groups. So I'd normally group three or four songs that I know work well together. I'll get into that, but in the next video, I'm going to look at mapping some master effects that will go along here. Um, I'm going to talk about sends and I'm going to look at how to set your queue up so that you can preview songs before adding them to the master output. The other thing I said I was going to do is look at the quantizing section where we're looking at four and eight bar countings. So that's enough of me and my voice, it's time for you to go and have a little play and um, have fun. And I'll see you in the next video.